Okay, right, here we are again. We are back. This is the We Quit Booze Brothers, which is a podcast where we try to have honest, no fluff conversations about our various experiences of quitting alcohol. And with me, as always, is my brother Matt. Hello, Matt. <laughs> Good evening, Mark. Yep, we're back again. I am uh I'm not wearing glasses for effect. I do actually uh, I am actually as blind as a bat, but I normally wear contact lenses. So um but today I um I thought I would rock the glasses for a bit. So uh yes, different look, different day, but uh but same person. All right, we we I think we would have guessed it was you. Um <laughs> they, they they do create and kind of style thing. They create on. quite a disguise, <laughs> but Yes, unlike Clark Kent, we we would have known that it was uh, it was you. I also, I mean, I've got contact lenses, but I'm at the age now where I have to put my glasses on to to read. So I'm constantly, I've, I'm not going to get one of those chains that go around your neck and you just hang the glasses from those. I draw the line at that, but uh, but these, unfortunately, you want to hope you don't get me in Secret Santa this year. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. Wish I hadn't mentioned it. Let's move on. So for this evening, because uh, we're doing another evening session, Matt did a, another 10K run yesterday, the Hoka 10K in Paris, did it in a ridiculous time. Uh, so well done on that. But because of that, we weren't able to do the normal recording. So we're recording this on Monday evening. Uh, yep. I'm actually in Spain at the moment, in uh, in Mallorca, which um, if you don't know where that is, it's uh, off the west coast of Spain, off the coast of Valencia, in, it's one of the Balearic Islands, so yeah, very nice, and it's uh, we've actually got a bit of sun here, which um, compared to the rest, well, compared to home in London, is um, is very welcome. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. I, I was in <laughs> yeah, there you go, right, so... So for this evening's topic, uh, a couple of things we wanted to have a conversation about. Um, we're at the section in the book. We are taking drawing references from Man Gets Sober at the moment and continuing to go through that. And we reached the chapter called Recovery. And I just wanted to have a conversation about that chapter and also the chapter which is titled Addiction isn't a choice and uh, there's some sort of paradoxical elements to all of these titles but the the recovery thing is is an interesting one because earlier in the book you talk about the when people refer to alcoholism or addiction as being a disease and you have trouble with that I think you you you, you sort of mentioned that you don't regard addiction to alcohol as a disease that's not to decry anybody that feels that that's what it is this is just a kind of personal view i think when people refer to the term disease they you know they might be referring to the point the concept that it's a, a, a mental disease that it's associated with that but either way you say that recovery is a bit like disease you have trouble with it and you make a really good point and I've, I've i've highlighted it here which i think is worth talking about I'm paraphrasing the entire uh, paragraph here because I don't want to have a story with with me. It would take too long and we'd be on here for ages. But at the end of this paragraph, you you finish it by saying, my belief is that one learns to live with addiction, not recover from it. And I think your point is, is that the word recovery maybe almost creates some false hope that one day you'll just wake up and you'll be completely cured. You'll be completely recovered and alcohol will never ever be an issue for you and the risk or temptation has completely gone yeah so where to start on that really two key things really i, th I think i want to cover with the first one is my thoughts on disease so i'm in the wrong i believe alcohol is actually classified as a disease but when i wrote the book i wanted to write it from my perspective so what I observed what I went through because I think that we are not all the same it's a big spectrum you've been you've been through this so for me I didn't feel like it was a disease and I think what I wanted to say in the book about that is that we sometimes give people things to cling on to and I sometimes think that actually that's 
wrong, if you like, because could it be used as as an excuse? You know, it's not my fault. It's it's a disease, and I and I think sometimes, certainly in my case, I had to take responsibility for the situation I was in. You know, only no one was physically tipping alcohol down my throat. The only person doing that was me. Now it is a mental thing i'd say it's more of a mental illness <coughs> as opposed to disease so for me that's what it is it's more of a a mental illness it's a thing in your your mind yes there's a physical thing but i would say the mind game is far harder than certainly my experience than the physical addiction then on to to recovery wow two two big ones this evening um so for for recovery Again, I struggle with the word recovery because at what point are you no longer in recovery? Are you recovered? How long does that take? Is it a month, two months, six months, years, decades? I, I don't know. And does the word recovery give people false hope? Maybe you don't recover per se you just learn to live differently it's not something that when you break an arm you are going to recover from it it's been set in a certain way you've been told how long the cast is going to be on for and when it's removed you'll have use of that arm again and you've recovered um and i just wonder why it's why we've chosen this word i think that's really more the thing you know what do you do how do you treat someone in, who's in recovery because that's that's the other issue i have is is if i say to someone i'm in recovery you're kind of immediately you know painting yourself with that brush i think you know like the 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 oh i'm i'm an alcoholic you know that's that's what it means right let's not mm -hmm. you know Let's cut to the chase. When you say you're in recovery, everyone knows what it means. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's maybe it's not. But you know, do you do what do you do? Do you buy them flowers? Do you buy them chocolates? Do you? I don't know. So for me, I think you know, it, it, it's it's maybe better to say you know, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't drink anymore. Or you know, I'm 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 working I'm working on, you know, this whole uh, not drinking thing. Or you know, I'm in transition. You know, at the moment from from where I was before to where I am now and still getting help. But if you want to use recovery, then that's absolutely, absolutely fine. And, and I think that the, the reality is, is also with recovery, does it suggest that once you have recovered, you are no longer as you would have been before? So what I mean by that is if I felt recovered and had a drink would I now be like any normal or person who didn't have a problem mm. I don't think I would I would be probably within a week or two back up to the levels I was because for me it just doesn't work you know I don't I can't do moderation I never really could and for me you know one drink is uh, is too many and ten's not enough so so I don't think you really do kind of recover so that's why i don't really like the the terminology um yeah i don't know what your thoughts are on that you know i know yeah it, it, look i know it's a really difficult one and that's one of the reasons why it's worth talking about i think and you know just to make it clear i don't think that we want to posit any particular opinions either way this podcast is is all about discussing the topic of abstaining from alcohol the benefits and the upsides and of course in order to examine the benefits and the upsides and the journey in abstinence you have to explore the world of you know dr drinking itself in in all its sort of glorious technicolor detail it's 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 an esoteric subject i know exactly what you mean you know you don't transmit you know you can you can catch you can go to a tropical island and catch a nasty tropical disease which is why you mm -hmm. go and get jabs before you go to these places to try to create immunity from it you don't catch alcoholism it's not something which is going to happen to you without you being 
complicit somehow. There is some mm. involvement. Um, y- you know, if you get a nasty c- case of cholera, then it's uh, it's it's a, a, a you know it's an a, a, the, the disease itself is, is is evident. There is something in your system which is an abnormal presence, if you like. Whereas in the side the apart apart from the way they think about and regard alcohol i'm not sure you could necessarily say that as i say this isn't to decry the term mm. recovery or the term disease just to really think about it and explore it but what i really there's a there's a you've got a line or two in in the your book and i think it's one of the best uh statements that you make actually in the entire book i really really love it and i suppose this is kind of a natural conclusion to this discussion about recovery and is is it a disease or not you say getting sober is about making a choice and providing yourself with enough weapons in your armory to make sure you never forget why you originally made this choice. I think that's a really, really strong, really powerful, brilliant, brilliant way of capturing the essence of what we are talking about. And I kind of agree on the recovery thing. I'm not sure you ever really do recover. What I think is you you establish a different way to live your life. Absolutely. No, and I, and I, you know, I want to say again, and I keep saying it is when I sat down to write this book, I, I looked at me, I, I actually purposely didn't read other books before I wrote mine. I, I just thought, no, this has to be my experience. This has to be. And, and you know what, maybe that's will help someone else. Maybe someone else will read it and go, do you know, what? I, I kind of feel the same way or, or I'm glad you said that or, or maybe they totally disagree. And that's, that's a beautiful thing about a free world is that we can we can do that um when i talk about you know the weapons in your in your armory i think like anything it, it can be like you know you know this creating a business it can be you know the more the more you you plan and and, and if you plan in the right way the more chance of success you'll have and for me it was about you know if you you know i tried it once before as we know as we've spoken about many times and it didn't work I wasn't prepared I wasn't right I didn't have the right tools I didn't have the right things I didn't Mm. I hadn't done the research I hadn't Mm. found what worked for me I hadn't found those videos that I you know started um you know watching uh I hadn't uh you know I hadn't found that the right motivation if you like I hadn't I hadn't had the right moment that happened to me so so I didn't have the right the right arms in, 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 in my hand. And, you know, those, those change as well. You know, when you, when you move forward with it, you, you start to put different things in your mind because you go through such a change that you start to go, well, actually, I, I want a bit, bit more than that. You know, I want not just to be, you know, no longer in debt, for example, I actually want to, have a bit of financial freedom, maybe, you know, so, so you might start looking at other ways to do that. And so, you know, the things, things change as you, as you move along, you, you might want to go down the route of helping others, which is, you know, what, what we do, uh, what we love to do. And, you know, you'll, you'll need sort of various arms for that, because, you know, and another thing as well, which is really tough is, is, is you may, may at points be required to, be honest about some of the things that you did or that happened or or the story or, or whatever and some of those things aren't pretty and and that requires a certain you know type of uh, arm if you like as well you know so so that's that's what i meant by it and um yeah i think i think it's it is important i think it's one of the reasons why i like to do these videos is to remind all of us why we quit it can be easy for that to slip out of consciousness and just the kind of vicissitudes of life can flood in and you forget what it is. You know, sometimes if you're not careful, I think maybe this is one of the the reasons why people might slip back into drinking is you, 
you forget why you quit you it, it the sort of reasons why you quit become diluted by the world and that's quite a dangerous place to be you can you can sort of slip back into drinking very very easily if you're if you're not careful so i think the point about building the weapons building the tools the reminders the sort of yeah i i, I think that's where i get to with the whole you know in recovery is it a disease is addiction forced upon you? Are we responsible? Blah, blah, blah. I think you can talk that uh, through until the cows come home. And I guess in a way, it doesn't matter, really. It doesn't matter whatever mm -hmm. works best for you. The point is choosing an alternative way to live your life and realising the massive benefits and the upsides of that different path, that different journey. And in here, you talk about addiction isn't a choice and it's a you know paradoxical title really because your point is that no one forced the drink on, on you nobody forced you yeah. to to drink the drink and I think why do we go from being a happy social drinker you know a few drinks here and there to suddenly it's kind of got a hold of us and it's it's ruling our life and of course you get caught up in this vicious trap this vicious vortex so whilst I don't think um you know, I think addiction, it, weirdly, I think your the reasons for you to start drinking are your choice. But I actually do think that if you become addicted, it's, well, I've said this before, my view is that it is your responsibility and it is for you're the person that needs to make the change and you're the person that needs to take control of it but it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's too addictive. Yeah. It's too, you, you, it's such a dangerous vortex and you, you can easily slip into it. And of course it's the great leveler. So just to sort of finish off on that thought in the book, you list a whole bunch of famous successful people um, who have struggled with, with alcoholism or some form of addiction, Carrie Fisher, Daniel Radcliffe, Buzz Aldrin, Anthony Hopkins, Stephen King, Robin Williams, Jamie Lee Curtis, Matthew Kerrison, Kelly Osborne, Robert Downey Jr., Bradley Cooper, Ben Affleck, Ewan McGregor, Brad Pitt. And they said on this list, you've got an astronaut, a man who is the recipient of an Academy Award, three BAFTAs, two Emmys, the Cecil B. DeMille Award, and who in 19, 1993 was knighted for services to the arts. You've got Harry Potter, Princess Leia, and Obi fucking Wan Kenobi uh, as well. So it it doesn't really matter i suppose whether you choose to refer to this as being in recovery i know when you know in alcoholics anonymous which is a fantastic organization mm. helps m m millions of people you know right. it way extends way beyond their reach by and then some and i think they very much sponsor this idea of of, of recovery um and so great if that's but but I don't think there's any harm in offering a different perspective or a different point of view, which is exactly what you've done in the book. The same exists with disease. Um, you know, the um, sort of somewhat uh, disgraced now, sadly, Russell Brand. And I know, we, you know, difficult one to talk about because um, but he he used a term previously in his book, which is and I know you mentioned it in your book, which is um, maybe another way to to sort of, you know, cover this is are you a bit fucked and could you be unfucked and i think ultimately this is all about unfucking yourself whatever you want to call it however you want to describe it climbing out of it and i as well i love that thing about just giving yourself you know sobriety is about giving yourself the tools and the weapons and to just remind yourself the reasons why you quit and and keep reminding yourself of all of the upsides of of being sober Wow, I don't think I could have put it any better. Yeah, I I completely agree. And 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 this is another thing. It's 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 personal. It's it's whatever works for you. So whoever's listening to this, you know, go down the road you want. This is just some some of the things I've noticed, and um, it it's about that. It's about latching on to to what works for you, and. Um, you know, it's there's no there's no competition here. There's no, 
oh, mine is definitely a disease and, and I, you know, I'm in recovery and I'm following the 12 step program. If you're doing that, God, all credit to you. I mean, wow, just fantastic. You know, some people may look differently at it. I looked differently at it in the sense that I felt I had some responsibility for, for where I'd ended up. You know, I felt that, you know, yes, it is hugely addictive and, and that's, you know, that's not to be dismissed because, um, you know, you, you, what starts out as fun becomes a, a habit and then, then becomes an, an addiction. But, um, you know, I, um, I didn't try and do anything about it for a long time. I liked it. You know, if I'm brutally honest, it was, it was what I did, you know, and, um, and then, then it just got, you know, worse and worse. I got older and things got you know, more affected and, and then, then it becomes really problematic. And, and that's when you, you, you know, you, there does have to be a, I believe some self-reflection on your behalf. And, yeah. I, and I think that's where I'm going with it. It's really, it's really, you can, you can say I'm, I'm an alcoholic. You can say I'm a drug addict. You can say I need to get help but until you stand up and go, right, I'm done with this. I've got to do something about this. Not yeah. got to, I, I want I, to do something about yeah. it. Yeah. I, I really like the point that what I'd like to say to anybody is if you feel like you've got a problem with alcohol, I just want you to know it's not your fucking fault. It is not your fucking fault, right? Yeah. However, you are the only person who has the ability to do something about it. It is your responsibility to, to change it. So whilst the situation you find yourself in isn't your fault because of this highly addict, the highly addictive nature of it, it is about you making the decision and being ready yeah. to stop. And just sort of moving on from, from there, when you do stop, you talk about this as well in your in your book. I think the idea of how you explain that decision to other people kind of comes into play too, because there is a bit of a stigma attached to it. If you say, oh, I had to quit drinking, then they will immediately, and you mentioned this in your book, assume that you were kind of lying on a park bench with a bottle of hard liquor in a brown paper bag, you know, lying in a pool of your own piss or something like that. And, and, and of course that's not true. And, and there's a fear that by saying, well, I had to quit, there's this sort of stigma to it. So I think as you come into this world of sobriety, um, like I said, the semantics of how you describe it are entirely, you're at liberty to decide what works best for you. But what I would say is rehearse your elevator pitch when it comes to explaining why you quit. Decide what works best for you. You can lie. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It doesn't matter. Um, you can, you, you've, you've mentioned this. You could just say, I tried a dry, dry January and I liked it so much, I just carried on. You could say, my, and we, the, what I will say to you is that I quit eight years ago. For the first two or three years, it was, it was quite a thing having to explain to people but a couple of things happen when you've done it for a while number one most people know by now most people in my world know that I don't drink so it rarely comes up and also what I find is that the people that I now tend to sort of come across or meet or socialize with or whatever whatever it's just not a big deal in fact I, I, find, I find it a bit of a badge of honor I'll, I'll often say I don't drink and sometimes people say why and now I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin with it and I just use the standard term to say it was completely counterproductive for me. You know, I just, it was getting in the way of all the things that I really wanted to do. It was just counterproductive. And I, and I tried, tried life without it. I tried to see what that felt like and it felt a whole lot better. And I've never really looked back. So, so I've melded a lot of points in there, but I suppose it, it really does all fold into this oblique, esoteric, you know, kaleidoscope of, factors all feed into what is this thing about drinking too much is it a disease are you in recovery at the end of the day none of it really fucking matters what matters most is the world and the life and the clarity and the feeling of pride and self-worth and that return to self that you get when you get rid of that shit that's basically where we get to 
brilliantly said, brilliantly said. I don't think I can add to that really. I think that, you know, the the when I talk about responsibility, taking some responsibility, that 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 could just simply be picking up the phone to your best friend and saying, I'm a bit worried. That's it. That's all you know, that that could just be that. And and it's not your fault, you know. Really, really, you know, because you, you, you know, you look at the drinks industry. Look at look at what part of growing up is like. Look at it as a rite of passage. You know, it's no bloody surprise that lots of us fall into this. Uh, and it, and it's and it's you know, I do believe some people are more receptive to it than others, and I think I was. And uh, um, you know, it's just yeah, you know, there's another world out there. There's another life afterwards, and um, if you want some of that trust me it's it's worth having i agree yeah if you weren't susceptible to it you wouldn't be listening to this channel <laughs> we were and you have no control over that it just it is what it is like you know i always use my wife as an example she can have one or two glasses of fizzy wine and she's done that's it she doesn't even have to think about it, it doesn't occur to her there's no yeah. mental gymnastics going on inside her head there's no mm. compulsion to drink more she's just had enough and unfortunately i'd never had enough i'd never no. had enough you know like yeah. you said, one was too many ten was nowhere near enough yeah exactly that exactly that so yeah okay. no not a competition don't you know there's no judging it's just you know it's about finding that that way out for yourself and and if we can can be any help and if what we say is any help and you know agree disagree let us know comments are great we always reply we you know we do this because we really really want to yeah perfect all right we'll leave it there we'll leave it there for this time we'll do another one next week i assume so for now that's uh that's it from me never quit quitting so bye from me and it's bye from me good night everyone and it's bye from him cheers take care <laughs> Bye.